It's neither smart nor practical to rely on just one tool in threat hunting. Diverse skills need rich toolkits, frameworks, and knowledge bases that span different domains. This episode will explore a comprehensive range of tools and practical techniques across different distinct skill sets essential for threat hunters. Get ready for an action pack episode as things are about to get really fast paced. These tools and techniques may not be the ultimate choice, but they are free or open source, a decent starting point for getting the hang of the concept. Hi, I am Aysam Eslahi and you are in for another episode of Cyber Threat Hunt 101 series by Nothing Cyber. Please subscribe, share and hit that notification bell to stay in the loop. In the previous part, we have covered 10 essential cybersecurity skills that every threat hunter should have, even if they haven't fully mastered them. Remember, threat hunting begins with visibility and insights. We can enhance visibility using two primary approaches, active and passive. Active asset discovery involves scanning networks and systems using tools like network scanners to find assets. In contrast, the passive approach analyzes collected data like network traffic and logs to identify assets without direct interaction. These two methods work together to provide a complete picture of digital assets. Advanced IP scanner is a trusted freeland network scanner. It's user-friendly and we can run it in a portable mode. Other scanners like Nmap offer the same feature. But it's crucial to emphasize that IT assets extend beyond servers, hosts, and workstations. They include any hardware, software system, or information valued by an organization, and all the entities keep their data. I highly recommend checking out Awesome Asset Discovery Repository by Red Hunt Labs on GitHub. It's a valuable resource for discovering and managing assets in cybersecurity and IT environments. These assets often come with various vulnerabilities, bringing us to our next point, vulnerabilities and exploits. A simple vulnerability scanner helps us identify the known ones. For example, Nessus Essentials. The free version of Nessus offers basic vulnerability scanning for home users with up to 16 IPs. It's not for a more extensive scan, but we are in the 101 series and this would be enough to practice and grasp the concept. There are several other scanners to consider. Is this even a hunt? Not at all. It's just a signature-based detection, but it's an integral part of a threat hunt as it enables us to identify the known issues quickly and focus more on unknowns. In general, understanding vulnerabilities is vital for threat hunting. Let's review a few resources. On the technical side, CTF games and many other platforms that provide vulnerable systems and applications help threat hunters gain practical experience and develop the offensive mindset to understand how vulnerabilities and exploits work. However, a sophisticated attack often involves the combination of multiple vulnerabilities and techniques. Understanding vulnerabilities alone is insufficient. We must also place them within the context of attack vectors and TTPs. The MITRE framework provides insights into adversaries' tactics, techniques, and procedures. Tactics are the what of an attack, and techniques are the how of an attack. What does that mean? Tactics refers to the high-level objectives or goals adversaries aim to achieve during an attack. Techniques are a specific methods or actions adversaries use to accomplish their tactical objectives. A single tactic could be achieved through multiple techniques. The MITRE Navigator is a tool that helps visualize and navigate this framework, facilitating the assessment of threat actor behaviors and attack patterns. Atomic Red Team is a framework and library of atomic tests that mimic real-world attack behaviors. 
it's an excellent way to learn about cyber attacks or test defenses. It provides us with a collection of tests aligned with MITRE framework. Atomic Red Team tests are designed to be small, focused, and easy to execute. We have some other resources to consider as well. When it comes to defending against these threats, attack surface management is essential. It involves identifying, monitoring, and managing potential entry points or vulnerabilities in a digital wonderland. Three simple steps, discovering, managing, and continuously monitoring. The OVASP MS project conducts network mapping to identify attack surfaces and discover external assets by employing open source data gathering and active recon methods. There are many other fantastic tools that enable us to manage our attack surfaces. Let's quickly review a few of them. Attack surface management relies on information sources like Threat Intelligent and OSINT to better understand and manage attack surfaces and potential threats. A spider foot, one of my favorite tools. It makes OSINT easier. It's powerful, simple to install, and user-friendly with over 200 modules. Most of them don't require API keys, and many others offer free options. AlienWorld OTX is a platform for sharing and analyzing cybersecurity threat information. By becoming a part of OTX, we gain immediate access to a worldwide network of threat researchers and security experts, ensuring we stay informed about emerging threats. Another fantastic open source threat intelligence platform called MISP, Malware Information Sharing Platform. It enables us to share and collaborate on threat intelligence information, such as indicators, malware samples, and threat actor tactics and techniques. It also integrates with various security tools and platforms, enhancing threat detection and response automation. Let's check out a few more tools as well. Don't forget the dark side of the moon, the dark web. The dark web is a hidden part of the internet that is not accessible through traditional and typical search engines. We can use a specialized tool or search engines to search for a specific keywords, data, or indicators on the dark web, or scan and monitor onion websites for any references to particular entities, products, or services. Or we can use Torbot, a dark web open source intelligence tool. It's a Python-based open source tool designed to collect dark web information and present the collected intelligence data in an interactive tree graph. Ahmia, if I pronounce it correctly, it's a search engine for finding websites and information on Tor networks. To use it, we will need the Tor browser bundle. We can use this search engine to look for many information such as targeted attacks, exposed credentials, vulnerability information, insider threats, and hacked accounts. Remember, we are hunters. We use the dark web wisely for defense and ethical purposes. All the tools we have discussed till now enable us to uncover information about threats, vulnerabilities, and attack TTPs. Threat modeling brings a structure and a strategy to the table. There are several commonly used threat modeling approaches and two free tools by OWASP and Microsoft. Both of them employ the S-TRI threat modeling methodology. In my opinion, for threat hunting, extensive threat modeling is optional. Attack trees and threat matrix are sufficient. Attack trees are graphical representations of potential attack scenarios. They start with a single root node representing the primary goal of an attacker and branch out into various attack vectors and sub-goals. Consider a scenario where the main goal is to gain unauthorized access to a secure server. The attack tree outlines two main ways an attacker can gain unauthorized access to that server, remote and physical. 
on their remote access, they can exploit which passwords or security vulnerabilities, for example. In the case of physical access, the attacker may steal credentials or access to the server hardware directly. No, we need a thread matrix, which is a component of a holistic risk assessment to assess the likelihood and the impact of each thread. When addressing a specific vulnerability, the CVSS, Common Vulnerability Scoring System, and EPSS, Exploit Prediction Scoring System, significantly enable us to assess that vulnerability's severity and the likelihood of exploitation in real-world scenarios. And finally, the first responder tools and techniques. What if we face an ongoing attack during a threat hunt? We need different tools to collect volatile data and conduct a quick analysis. Here is a list of additional tools we require for rapid data collection, analysis, and high-level incident response. There are indeed many tools to explore. Please save this video for future reference and feel free to share other tools in the comments to help our community find them. In next video, we will dive into the art of visualization and techniques for threat analysis. Stay tuned.